Uh, here's what happened. Okay, it, it's about the 1968 presidential election. In that election, the Democratic side was kind of in trouble, in that the Democratic electorate was really split. They were not at all unified uh, behind their candidate. On the right, Southern white Democrats who were against civil rights, they were being peeled off to vote for George Wallace, the former Alabama governor and, of course, the symbol of proud segregation. So the Dixiecrats are getting peeled off from the Democrats that year. And also, different problem for the Democrats, people hated the Vietnam War. And the president at the time was a Democrat, Lyndon B. Johnson, LBJ. The escalation in Vietnam was on him. So if you were against the war, as most Americans at that point were, this is the Gallup polling on the war at that time. This is the number of people who thought the war was a mistake, that number going up and up and up over time. If you were against the war, as increasingly everybody was, you were not psyched to vote for LBJ's successor in the Democratic Party. Right. So the so the Democrats were losing their appeal in the South because of race and racism. And they were losing the anti-war vote because Vietnam was their war. Well, the Republican candidate that year trying to take advantage of that split on the Democratic side uh, was this handsome devil. Candidate Dick Nixon, Richard Nixon in 1968, was running against a Democratic Party that he knew was split. He was in response, pledging to get rid of the draft. And he claimed to have a plan to end the war. He argued that if you wanted the war to end, you needed to elect him. You needed to vote the Democrats out of office because clearly LBJ and his party, the Democrats and their Democratic candidate, Hubert Humphrey, they had no idea how to end the war. If you wanted the war to end, what you needed was Nixon. What you needed was total change at the White House. The Democrats had to go so Dick Nixon could come in and end Vietnam. But then... Less than a week before the election, it all went horribly wrong for Richard Nixon. Because less than a week before the election, it was five nights before Election Day, on Halloween night, 1968, the Democratic president, LBJ, went on TV in a surprise nationally televised address. He made a surprise announcement that peace was at hand. The communist side, the North Vietnamese side, was going to make major concessions at peace talks, The U.S. anticipating that the other side, the South Vietnamese, were going to agree to a deal based on those concessions. Peace was at hand. The terms were all set. Peace was at hand. In recognition of the fact that peace was about to be declared, the United States would step back right away and stop all military operations in Vietnam. LBJ said that on a Thursday night. The election was going to be the following Tuesday. Turns out the Democrats do know how to end this war, this war that the country hated. So this was bad news for Richard Nixon for that election, right? Bad news for Richard Nixon, but good news for the country who wanted the war to be over. Good news certainly for the people who were fighting the war. This was good news, right? Almost. Thursday night, LBJ made that announcement that peace was about to be agreed to by all sides in Vietnam. That was Thursday night. By Saturday morning, never mind, deal was off. Peace was not at hand because the South Vietnamese side had decided actually it didn't want the deal. In fact, they didn't even want to talk about a deal. They pulled out of the peace talks. And so the war was back on. What happened? What happened between Thursday and Saturday? Now we know. How are you, my friend? Well, I've got one this morning that's pretty rough for you. Uh, we have found that our our friend, uh, the uh, Republican nominee, our California friend, has been playing uh, on the outskirts with our enemies and our friends both. He's been doing it through rather subterranean sources here. And uh, he has been saying uh, to the Allies that you're going to get sold out. You better not give away your liberty just a few hours before I can preserve it for you. Mrs. Chenault is contacting uh, uh, their ambassador. Now, this is not guesswork. Mrs. Chenault, she's young and attractive. I mean, she's a pretty good-looking girl. And she's around town. And she is uh, warning them... uh, Uh, to uh, uh, not get pulled in on this Johnson move. President Lyndon Baines Johnson, 1968, Saturday morning, November 1st, explaining to Senator Richard Russell what had gone wrong with this peace deal that everybody thought was going to end the war. 
I mean, LBJ had been so sure this is going to end the war that he went on TV Thursday night and told the country the war was going to end. Peace was at hand. The reason peace did not happen is what he was explaining on the phone is that the Republican nominee for president that year, Richard Nixon, had intervened in the peace talks to blow them up. He used an intermediary who was involved in the talks to approach the South Vietnamese side and tell them, don't do it. Approach them and tell them to pull out and not agree to a deal. He told them this deal being worked out by LBJ, this whole deal to end the war, these peace talks in Paris is not going to be a good deal for them. They should not participate. They should just wait until after the election when he, Richard Nixon, would be president and he'd give them a much better deal. Johnson was going to sell them out. He, Richard Nixon, was the one who they should deal with. Nixon's intermediary was actually caught on tape telling the South Vietnamese ambassador, just hang on through the election. Hang on. Hang on. Don't end the war. We need the war to keep going through the election. It's outrageous, right? I mean, the war could have ended. It was on the verge of ending, except a candidate for office in our country thought that the war ending would help his opponent in the election. He thought he'd have a better chance of getting elected if the war kept going. And so, while saying he wanted the war to end... He did what he could to keep it going when it otherwise would have ended. It is astonishing. And President Johnson thought so, too, at the time. We now know. And they oughtn't to be doing this. This is treason. I don't. I think it would shock America if a principal candidate was playing with a, a source like this uh, on a matter this important. Yeah. President Lyndon Johnson there on the same day as that earlier tape, remarking that as far as he can tell, this is treason. I do not think he is saying that hyperbolically. He says it repeatedly on these tapes. He thinks that what has happened there, an American politician purposely prolonging the war and stopping the peace for his own purposes, he thinks that is a hanging offense. He thinks that is treason. This was four days before the election that year. Having thought that the war was going to be over, that a peace deal had been negotiated, now the president finds out the peace deal fell through because a candidate who wanted there not to be peace before the election intervened to make one side walk away. Now, Why didn't LBJ say anything publicly? I mean, this is right before the election. Can you imagine how the country would have reacted to that? This is a war the whole country was against. It was going to be over, except candidate Dick Nixon intervened to undo the peace deal and keep the war going. Can you imagine how angry the American public would have been? But LBJ did not say anything publicly at the time because he thought that he couldn't. And the reason he thought he couldn't is because of the way he found out what Nixon had done. The FBI illegally wiretapped the phones of the South Vietnamese ambassador. That's how we knew. We couldn't let anybody know that we were illegally listening into the ambassador's phone lines, and so they couldn't let anybody know what it was they heard illegally while they were illegally listening in on the ambassador's phone lines. And so Nixon got away with it. And the October surprise, the Halloween night surprise that the Democrats' war was ending right before the election, that October surprise ended up getting undone. The war did keep going, and anybody who was anti-war in the country really did have no reason at all to vote for a Democrat. The racist right-wing guy peeled off 13% of the Democratic vote on the other side of the Democratic coalition. And so, yes, the Republican, Richard Nixon, won. It worked. Richard Nixon got elected, barely. Squeaked by, but he won, in part on the basis of the idea that he was the guy who knew how to end the war, not those dumb Democrats. And of course, Nixon did not know how to end the war. He sure knew how to keep it going, but he didn't know how to end it. He didn't have a plan. And instead of the war ending on Halloween in 1968, the war went on for five more years while he was president, in which time more than 15,000 Americans were killed, as were untold numbers of Vietnamese. So that happened. That actually happened. And now in 2013, what are we supposed to do with that information? LBJ is dead. Nixon is dead. Hubert Humphrey is dead. George Wallace is dead. 15,000 Americans are dead who otherwise would not have been because of what happened. All the Vietnamese who died. How does this get made right? It cannot be made right in the most basic sense that the people who died needlessly because of this duplicitous political decision cannot be brought back from the dead. You also can't get revenge. You can't indict Nixon's ghost. But you can't refuse to let him get away with it again. You can't make sure it is part of the way that we at least tell his history and the history of that war and the history of modern American politics. You have to include it in the history, both so nobody gets away with it in the long run the way he did in the short run, but also so we don't do it again. 
So we at least know something like this is possible. So we at least don't dismiss this kind of possibility as some conspiracy theory bit of nonsense. So we at least know there is precedent, modern precedent, for this particular kind of craven evil. On Friday night show, uh, Chris Hayes was here, for which I'm very grateful. I was in L.A. uh, uh, being on the Bill Maher show, and I know Chris was here very ably helming this desk. One of the things that Chris talked about on Friday night show was the appearance at CPAC this year of the last Republican nominee for president, Mitt Romney. Chris talked about how uh, Mr. Romney expressed defiant optimism about the future of conservative politics and the Republican Party. But the thing that struck me the most about Mitt Romney's speech which was his first major public appearance since losing the presidency, was the part at the very end of his speech where he talked about the Iraq War. He described the Iraq War as a war of liberation. We fought the Iraq War to liberate the Iraqi people from tyranny. You know what? Actually, the Iraq War was supposedly to go get Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction and the nuclear weapons that he was going to set off. We are going into that war to stop him from giving those nuclear weapons and those biological and chemical weapons that he supposedly had to stop him from giving those weapons to the terrorists that they told us he was working with in al-Qaeda. That's why they told us we had to go to war in Iraq. That's what they told us about why we had to have that war. And none of it was true. Ten years ago this week, when we invaded Iraq, we were told that it was all about 9-11. That if we didn't go invade Iraq that the next attack on us by the same people who attacked us before would be a nuclear attack. A chemical weapons attack, a biological weapons attack, or a nuclear attack. The smoking gun would be a mushroom cloud. And that was not true. There was no nuclear program. There was no weapons of mass destruction. There was no relationship between the Iraqi government and the people who attacked us on 9-11. And and yet, there's the Republican presidential nominee, the last one to run, saying, actually, the Iraq war was a war of liberation. At the Republican convention this year, when they picked that presidential nominee, the foreign policy speech was given by the person who was national security advisor during the Iraq war, the one who said the smoking gun would be a mushroom cloud, who described that war in her speech that night at the convention as a hard, hard decision that kept us from being attacked again the way we were on 9-11. I mean, 10 years in, it is very hard to get right with, to come to terms with the fact that we went to war based on something that our government told us, that our president told us that was not true. There is nothing that can be done about that decision that will bring back the 115,000 Iraqi civilians who died in that war, the more than 4,400 American troops who died in that war, the more than 30,000 Americans who were wounded in that war will not be made whole by anything that we can do now. We cannot bring them back. We cannot heal their injuries retroactively. And George Bush and Dick Cheney and Condoleezza Rice and all the rest of them are still around. You know, I don't know what justice would look like for them at this point. But, but in terms of how we get right with this as a country, the accountability can't just be personal about the decision makers. It has to be about telling the story honestly of what happened so that they, like Nixon, don't get away with it in the long run the way they got away with it in the short run. So that we tell the story correctly and honestly. So that it doesn't happen again. So it's not dismissed as a conspiracy theory generations hence by Americans who can't believe something this evil and duplicitous would have happened in our country. It did. And to do right by what happened, we need to teach it that way and learn it that way if we want to have any hope of it not happening again. In American politics, there were plenty of Democrats who went along with the Iraq War 10 years ago, who believed it, who fell for it, who advanced it and made the lie more convincing by virtue of their Democratic endorsement. On the Democratic side, though, since... That, at least, has since become a source of shame. It's a strike against you in democratic politics, right? It's part of the reason we have a president named Barack Obama who was not part of that mess and not a president named Hillary Clinton who, frankly, was part of that mess. In the Democratic Party, people who were wrong on the Iraq war are seen as having been wrong about the Iraq war. They have had to apologize and explain why they were wrong. That vote for the Iraq war is held against them. On the Republican side, though, it's not like that. On the Republican side, Nixon still does have a secret plan to end the war. On the Republican side, Iraq was a war of liberation, if you ask them in 2013. On the Republican side, the Iraq war is what kept us safe so we wouldn't get attacked again the way we did on 9-11, if you ask them in 2012. That smoking gun could have been a mushroom cloud. Thank God we went in. 
They are still there arguing that. We have been through two presidential election cycles since then. It is now 10 years after the war and the war is over. And this is still the line at the top tier of the Republican Party trying to sell us the same lies that got us into that war in the first place. And until the Republican Party gets right on that, the history of this will never be told honestly, because it will always be seen as a contested and partisan thing. How does this ever get right? 